Tonight's special presentation is brought to you by Gruel, the healthy and nutritious breakfast, lunch, and dinner. God rest you, merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day. Ebenezer Scrooge was a miserly old skinflint who hated Christmas and everything about it. Nobody knew the extent of his meanness quite like his clerk, Bob Cratchit, who toiled for him many years at the counting house of Scrooge and Marley's. Mr. Scrooge, may I put a small piece of coal on the fire, sir? What, Cratchit? It's very cold, sir. Feel my nipples. There will be no coal burning nor nipple feeling in this office today. Get back to work. All right. I'll just do what I do every year and set my desk on fire. Do I have the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley has been dead these seven years. Yes, seven years ago this very night. Christmas Eve, seven years ago, Mr. Marley passed away. So you're Scrooge, then? I am Scrooge. Yeah, well, next time just say so, dude, okay? It's Christmas Eve. We all got a lot of things to do. <clears throat> anyway, uh, Mr. Scrooge, at this festive time of year... No. You're not even listening to what I have to say. You were going to ask me to contribute something to the poor in the name of Christmas. I know, dude, but come on, this is a Dickens script. I have 12 pages on figgy pudding alone. Christmas is a humbug. Okay, so Christmas is a humbug. Would you care to contribute to our Easter fund? Humbug. Policeman's Benevolent Society? Humbug. Trick or treat for UNICEF? Humbug. Cement Workers Bazaar? Humbug. Save the Prince of Wales? Humbug. Save the Humbug? Humbug. Lend me a dollar till Tuesday? Humbug. Well, this has been a little slice of heaven. I'll be going now. Merry Christmas. Humbug. Um, game of gin rummy, penny a point? Humbug. Mr. Scrooge, it's closing time. So it is. I suppose you want the whole day off tomorrow? If quite convenient, sir. It's not convenient and it's not fair. But I suppose if I was to duck your day's pay, you'd be all like, oh, oh. Mr. Scrooge is so mean. Oh, he, oh, Rick, you must help me, you must. That sounds nothing like me. Sounds more like Peter Lorre. And so Scrooge went home to have his nightly cup of gruel. He had gruel every night for supper, and often had gruel in the mornings for breakfast. Occasionally in the afternoon he would make himself a peanut butter and gruel sandwich, and on special occasions he would make gruel pie or gruel pudding, and wash it down with a nice hot frothy cup of gruel. So, I like gruel. What's it to you? Scrooge. <laughs> Who's there? Scrooge. Who are you? In life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. But now I'm just a ghost with this stupid thing on my head. I don't believe in ghosts. You don't believe your own eyes? You could be a figment of my imagination, brought on by an undigested bit of gruel. Yes, there's more of the gravy in you than of the grave. <laughs> More gravy than gravy, that's funny. <laughs> Thanks for the laugh there, Shecky. But listen, God, uh, the powers that be uh, think that you're not uh, Christmassy enough or something like that. And so they sent me to help save you, okay? Tonight, you will be visited by three ghosts. Though how that's supposed to help, who the hell knows? Uh, anyhow, uh, expect the first ghost at the stroke of one. The second ghost at the stroke of two. Ooh, let me guess, the third ghost at the stroke of three. Well, three, three thirty, uh, depending on traffic. Uh, you know, it's Christmas, a uh, busy time of year. Anyway, 
Take heed, Ebenezer. Don't be like me. Take heed. Take heed. Pull the string. Pull the string. Okay, Toodles. Hmm, even in death he's an idiot. I am the ghost of Christmas past. You look more like the businessman from the scenes past. Uh, yeah, I get that a lot, uh, but no, we're completely different. Uh, he had glasses. You have glasses? Uh, I know, but they're a different prescription. Ooh, let me guess, you're going to take me back into my past and show me all the mistakes I made when I was young. The mistakes that made me a miserly old skinflint. And once again, pages and pages of my dialogue are discarded. Well, guess what? I know all my mistakes, and I don't care. I like me. Don't you want to go back and see any of it? Your sister? Drama queen. How about your old fiancé? Too high maintenance. What about your old taskmaster, Mr. Fezziwig? My old taskmaster, Mr. Fezziwig? Yes, I'd like to see him. We'll just take hold of my hand and we'll go back in the past. No, I don't do time travel. Bring him here. What? You heard me. Bring him here. No, it doesn't work that way. I'm the star of the show and I get what I want. You want me to bring Fezziwig here? Well, uh, it's against regulations and it's probably a bad idea, but uh, I'll try. Akio Fezziwig. Sim Salabim. Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo. It's old Fezziwig alive again. That was disturbing. Yeah, well, see, that's the problem. When we go back into the past, we see people as they were. But when we bring dead people forward into the future, well, you know, they're all messed up. Well, I'll be going now. Uh, before you go, could you please... Oh. I've got Fezziwig's brains all over the place now. I am the ghost of Christmas present. Huh. I knew it. You're the same ghost as before. No, no. See, I'm the ghost of Christmas present, and he was the ghost of Christmas past. It's a big difference. It's funny how all you ghosts look alike. Okay, first of all, that is so racist. And second of all, I don't have time for this, okay? I'm only here for a short while, so listen up and listen up good, okay? Smarten up. Don't be stupid all your life. You gotta learn to love Christmas. This whole thing with you not loving Christmas, it's... I can't have it, okay? You understand? I, I can't have it. Don't get me angry. You plan on threatening me until I love Christmas? Don't make me put your head in a vice, because I will put your head in a vice to make you love Christmas. And now, I gotta go. Listen, before you go, can you... Okay. Toodles. I am the ghost of Christmas yet to come. Look, Ebenezer Scrooge, you are dead, forgotten, nobody remembers you, nobody cares about you, nobody visits you, except for Bob Cratchit every Christmas Eve who comes here to dance on your grave. Not a bad dancer. Nice dramatic music. Thanks, we're all about production at Ghost Central. Anyway, Scrooge, now you know your fate and... Oh, excuse me, I gotta take this call. You have a cell phone? Dude, I'm from the future. I got a flying car. Sorry there, Scrooge. I just got off the phone, and uh, it seems that we had a little kerfuffle. Um, I got a call from Bob in records, and, well, anyway. Uh, to make a long story short, it turns out you're the wrong guy. We were uh, not looking for Ebenezer Scrooge. We were looking, actually, for Eliza Sludge. Eliza Sludge, that cantankerous old woman who lives on the next street but one from me? The next street but one? The next street but one. You mean two blocks away? Yes. Yeah, well, next time just say so, dude. Sheesh. You know, you're really annoying the way you talk. Do you mean to tell me that you put me through all this just Excuse to... me. Thank you. 
Anyway, you're off the hook. I gotta go. Okay, but listen, before you go, could you... Who oh, stuck in the future, and I'm dead. I wonder how far into the future I am. Oh, look, a Starbucks. Maybe they have Guru Lattes. Cue the music, cue the music. I'm sorry. Are we doing the happy ending? Yes. Okay, okay. Oh yes, I do love Christmas. I promise to love Christmas in the past and in the future and so on and so forth and all that. Congratulations, Scrooge. You learned to love Christmas. You passed our test. And now you can go back to your own time and your own home. Merry Christmas, you daffy goofball. Bibbidi bobbidi boo. Yes. I'm back in my own home, in my own time, and I'm alive. Oh, I do love Christmas, I do. I love Christmas with all my... Did he say bibbidi bobbidi boo Oh, crap. Let's dance under the moonlight, the serious moonlight. No strings attached. <gasps> Look at the way the wave is. She's a bounce back every time. I will put your head in a vice to make you love Christmas.